Okay, Jeff, looks like you're all set. Welcome to Hudson Valley High School. And you should be in chemistry right now, room 207. Thank all right, you. good luck. What's with the toilet seats? It's Friday. Guys, calm down, man. You know what was sad about that video? Yeah. It's even hard. You guys were actually doing what that video was doing. One person wants to talk, so then everybody starts talking. Y'all notice that? One person shows disrespect, so then somebody else got to show disrespect. I didn't want to have to start off like that. But that's exactly what was just happening. That's what this whole video was just about. Can I get the first slide there, Melanie, please? Romans 12, 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. What does it mean to not conform? It means don't just follow what the rest of the world is doing. I credit you guys for being very intelligent people. I hear some of your jokes. Some of them are not so intelligent, but then some people have some very intelligent jokes. I listen to the way that you are with your friends and how you try to solve problems. Some of you guys give very good advice. Sometimes there's not so great advice. I say this because when we're in the world, we have to determine 
what is best for our lives in the will of God. Look what it says there in the second half. It says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. God's got a will for each and every one of your lives. And the thing that I hope that you guys have been getting out of this year is that there's a bigger picture besides just Redland Christian Academy. Every day you guys come to school, but then every day you guys leave. There's no one that's really here bunking it up down in the gym or anything like that. But we all come from very different walks of life. We all have different influences that make us who we are. You saw in that school there, everybody's walking around like this because they all have their shoes tied. How boring is that going to be if we all were just trying to look and be the same? Sometimes that's what we do here, though. We all try to look and be the same. You can say that it's peer pressure. You can say that it's, that's just what I want to do. But nine times out of ten, you guys are desiring to be your individual person. You want your personality to come through. You want people to know who you are. That's why it's so easy to talk about yourselves. If I get you one-on-one -on -one and I say, hey, what did you do? Or what do you like to do? Man, I hear all kinds of things coming out. And I guarantee you it's not the same thing as what somebody else wants to do. But yet, sometimes when I see you guys get together, all of a sudden, we all want to do the same thing. Do you know why God makes it that way? Why he tells us not to conform to the world? If you look a little further past this scripture, and don't go to the next one yet. If you look a little past this scripture, you'll see that, um, you know, we all have different talents and different skills to our disposal. God gave us those different talents and skills to make us unique. But it's to also help us to be one. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Why is it so easy to follow, but so hard to lead? Anybody know that? Why is it so easy to follow, but so hard to lead? It's hard to lead because most times when you're going to be a leader, that's not the path of least resistance. It's a lot easier to follow the flow, isn't it? Things are happening, you know, this person doesn't like this person, so I don't want to, you know, this is the cool person in the school, so I don't want to get them upset because if I'm on the other side from the cool person, then nobody's going to like me, so I'm just going to do whatever the cool person likes to do. But it's not always right, is it? So when we're in our lives, we have to make a decision. Are we going to be a leader or are we going to be a follower? That's something my dad used to always ask me. I always used to hate that because I was like, why you always got to throw this one at me? But I've learned that to be a leader is very important. To be a leader means that you can influence others to get the best out of themselves. You could be either a good leader or a bad leader. But hopefully if you're answering what God's will is, you'll be a good leader. Next slide, please. So in Romans 12, 3, it says, For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. 
How many people have heard the, the, the phrase or the, or the saying, in order to be a good leader, you have to first be a good follower? How many people have heard that? Very few. Wow. And that doesn't surprise me. In order to be a good leader, you first have to be a good follower. You know, what I see here in school sometimes, and you guys know I like to keep it real, what I see is that a lot of people have problems with authority. But at every moment in your life, you're going to have somebody who's in authority over you. Even if you are the CEO of a company, you are your own owner, you are the top dog in your company, you still have to answer to somebody. It might be your client, it might be a board of directors, but most importantly in your life, you still have to answer to God. You're always going to be in a point where you have to submit to somebody. Some people don't like that word submittal, but that is a term that you guys need to learn. Submit. Submit yourself to God. The thing is, is that we think God is just going to pour on all these situations of bad mess and everything for us. But God doesn't give you the bad. He gives you the good. He blesses your life. But you have to give him the opportunity to do that. If you don't give him that opportunity... What you're, in a sense, doing is saying, God, I know you got all these great things for me, but you know what? Forget that. I'm going to go get my own. And a lot of times what you think is great for you really is not. I thought it was great to go out and drink all night. I thought it was great to be in the limelight and party all the time. I used to be on like so many people's VIP list to get into whatever club I wanted to. I, I could do that. And I thought that, wow, oh, that's great. I'm the life of the party. God quickly showed me that wasn't the case. He showed me through hard situations. But in him showing me that, it brought out the best of me. It changed me. That's what it means to start transforming. When you let God change you, then you can begin to transform. Remember I showed you that video, Chiseled. That's one of the reasons why I want you guys to see that. I kind of had this in mind as well when I was bringing it up. But we have to be willing to change in order to let God bring out the best in us. He wants the best for you. But if you're not willingly giving that to him, you cannot receive what is best for you. Next slide, please. In this chapter, it talks about us all being together and about us all really being one body, working harmoniously together. But I love this set of scriptures here. You can read the rest of it if you like. I suggest reading all of Romans if you can, but we're in Romans 12. Read Romans 12. You'll see what it, what it says. But in 9 and 10 it says, Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And some other versions it says, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. I see you guys. You guys got great friends here. You know, you got your little cliques at times, but you got people who you would consider probably some of your best friends here. You got to be able to show that to everybody. That's what God wants. When we're doing what he asks of us, when we're transforming ourselves, we begin to understand what love is. Love becomes a secondary thing. It becomes second nature to us. And it becomes sincere. So I hope that what you guys have seen from our staff here, the teachers, the aimers, Mike, Rob, what I hope you've seen from them is, 
is the love that they've been trying to share with you all year long. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of you guys, you're there. And if you're there and you know exactly what I'm talking about, I encourage you, don't be a follower. Be a leader. Help show other people what it means to express that love. I have no shame in telling all you guys, I love you. I love you because of what Christ has done for me. He has shown me so many amazing things that happened in my life if I just trust him. And in that trust that I built up in God, he showed me I have to show that love to you guys. I have to show it to the person who's checking me out at the grocery store, to the person who's helping me at the restaurant when I go and eat. I have to show that love. But you see, it's not just that I have to, it's because I want to, because I love God so much. If there's anything that I want you guys to get out of this, is that it is to your benefit to love God. Don't be ashamed in what, it, in what the power of his gospel has to say. Don't be ashamed of it. It's that power of the gospel that will release you into the, to the freedom that you guys are looking for. This is going to take you into your next life. A lot of you guys, some of you guys won't even be here next year. Some of you guys are coming back. A lot of things happen over the summer. I encourage you, take this with you. Try to show that. Try to grow and mature in that way. You guys all consider yourselves adults, right? This is a very adult way of living. It means that you're maturing in your understanding about things. If you got any questions, make sure to ask the aimers, make sure to ask Mike and Rob, you can ask me, any of the teachers. Just ask, start, start having that conversation. I would love for you guys to find out about Christ's love more than anything else. Because that's what is most important in your life. That will last you for all eternity. This life is only temporary. We're only here for a little while. What we have with God later, it's going to matter so much more to you. There's an alternative. I don't think you want that. So choose God. Yep. Yeah.